Okay. Welcome to this webinar on how we deal with foot hang handling issues in donkeys. Um, it isn't going to be your standard, this is how you fix the problem um, in this way. I, I had a bit of a session on YouTube having a look at what was out there. And the tendency is always to go straight to the problem. And this is how you pick up a donkey's foot. And I'm going to share a bit of video from that uh, with you. But um, what I really want to do is get us thinking about why donkeys don't pick up their feet and a long-term approach to solving these problems. There should be absolutely no reason why any of you can't be picking up your donkey's feet and that your trimmers, barriers can't be trimming the feet calmly and relaxed. It's totally achievable. Um, I've been working with donkey's feet for 20 years now and uh, it's totally possible. I haven't seen a donkey we haven't been able to rehabilitate and have their feet picked up and be handled and be farriered calmly. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but it's totally achievable. So that's what we uh, want to focus on and how we go about that. In order to do that, what I've uh, done for you is um, prepared a little presentation, which I hope you can all see there. And essentially, what I want to do this evening is give you some of these outcomes by the end of this webinar. Very simple stuff, which I think is essential to the success of whatever you want to do with your donkeys. Be able to explain the importance of those stretching those comfort zones um, and shaping. Uh, and most importantly, you'll be able to stay safe. I wanted to talk about safety. It's really important. Having been doing this for about 20 years, this is the way I would recommend we pick up donkey's feet. And I know there are lots of different ways out there and everybody can just justify their own way and that's cool. But for me, I want a way that novices um, and experienced people alike can keep safe. Um, and this is why we recommend this method. So there's a big kick zone here. This lady's head is out of the way. And um, if the donkey does kick, then her head's not peering around the corner, looking at the bottom of the hoof and going to get injured. Her hands across the front of the leg. So we always recommend coming down. Um, between the donkey's legs and picking up the foot this way again if the donkey kicks out your hand isn't in the way and isn't going to get hit and the third element for picking up a donkey's foot is this hand needs to cup the hoof and the thumb stays around the hoof not across the back of the fetlock for two reasons that's often quite ticklish and the donkey's likely to kick out and third um, that if the donkey does kick and your thumb's there, there's a fair chance it's going to get broken. So I really want to just um, highlight those concerns. The other things are things like, you know, don't overreach yourself. Don't work at a level where you're not experienced and capable. You know, just be aware of that. Take your time. Everything. If we do everything that I'm going to talk about in the webinar, we'll stay safe. Um, but this is how we kind of recommend and I wanted a picture and you know in there to start with to say when we're thinking about picking up feet and we get to that end goal and some of you are thinking that'd be nice um, what I want to see is that's how we actually uh, go about picking up the feet so why um, don't donkeys uh, like having their feet picked up um, and it, it's pretty much this that Evolution didn't equip them to do that. So millions of years of evolution adapted their feet to be trimmed by the conditions in which they live. Standing on three legs, resting a fourth leg is totally normal behavior for any donkey. Standing um, with one leg in the air for three to five minutes is pretty much unheard of unless there is some severe pain. Standing for five to 15 minutes while a different species holds your foot and trims bits off the bottom of it is unheard of in evolution. It is not something the donkey's equipped to do. And for that reason, you have to start out with a real understanding is they're not supposed to be doing it. 
It's completely alien. It doesn't matter if your donkey is domesticated right now. Those um, 6,000 years of domestication doesn't replace 60 million years of evolution. And, and every time a donkey is born, it has to be domesticated. It has to be trained. So, you know, the starting point for getting good with feet is understanding it's completely normal that they don't like having their feet picked up. Once you have that, you start to build some patience. Second to that is why do donkeys kick? Well, there's a number of reasons and you'll all be thinking about these. You could identify them. You know, pain is one. Um, and this is your key factor. Pain is such a massive thing. Try and rule it out. Difficult with donkeys because they're so stoic, but we need to rule that out fear and fear is a huge one huge one for donkeys and we've got a case study we're going to look at and some fear is involved in this one and so pain and fear number two reasons that we are going to have a problem picking up feet lack of experience the donkey just hasn't been trained um, and previous experience or learnt behaviors and i've used the same picture because they pretty much all look the same how do you know which reason your donkey is actually kicking for we could add in there a, a human experience and confidence if we lack confidence if we don't have the experience that is just as likely to cause a donkey to kick as well and so we have to explore these um, areas first and that's what i don't see happening in a lot of methods right let's just show you how to pick up his feet what we need to figure out first is why why is he kicking now he's kicking because he's a donkey and because kicking is what donkeys do they do it in the wild they do it in domestication um, it's millions of years of evolution it's essentially communication it's how they communicate and once again you think about this and you go yes that is what's happening then you can be a little bit more patient you can be calmer you can begin to relax into this whole process the challenge we have is you get one donkey that doesn't kick and one donkey that does and it and it seems like well donkeys don't have to kick so why are you kicking pain fear lack of experience learnt behaviors because they're a donkey because they're not spent, supposed to be picking up their feet i'm trying to always put us humans in a position of responsibility we've got to be responsible for why our donkey is not picking up their feet it's it's the starting place And um, what's happening is your donkey is communicating. Your donkey's restlessness, the donkey kicking, the donkey just pulling his feet away. He is screaming at you. It is communication. You have to see these problems as a communication. Now, it might be pretty hear, hard to hear them. And if you get it wrong, it could be painful to hear them. But it is communication. They are telling us stuff. And we need to listen to them because what often happens is we tend to blame the donkey. We attribute their behavior to their character. He's being difficult. He's being naughty. He's being um, stubborn. He's being um, shy. He's being nervous. He's doing all these sorts of things. And we, we attribute behavior to character rather than to the other things that actually are the causes of them. Now, I did want to cover this a little bit for you because some of you work in environments where you are challenged by animals that come into you because you're in a rescue or not for profit situation and they've got long feet. And that donkey is weight shifting, it's uncomfortable. The vet's saying, like, we need to get those feet trimmed and get this animal comfortable as soon as possible. And I know that happens with us at the donkey sanctuary. And it's a real compromise because you want to say, well, I'm going to take four or five weeks. I'm going to begin to improve this behavior before we, we do anything with it. But that's something we often don't have time to do. So I wanted to talk briefly about getting it done versus training. The one thing it's important to recognize is when we talk about getting it done is I think getting it done is often used as a, an excuse for overpowering the animal or doing it badly. And I don't think it has to be. There are situations that um, donkeys come in to rescue uh, organizations where in their own best interests, we have to get those feet trimmed as quickly as possible. 
but we can't let that be an excuse to just overpower the animal and and we have to operate on the guiding principle of having a good experience now that requires us to stand back it's not just a heavy hander let's get it done it's about sedation i highly recommend that if you're in those situations you rely on sedation sedate the animal get your veterinarian involved uh, oral sedation first is often easier to get in before you have to get into um, intravenous um, or intramuscular if you need to your vet is going to lead on that but it's a good thing to do often we look at sedation as some sort of failure or a bad thing for the donkey done well it is not a problem it actually improves the situation and it buys us time on the other side i, I know it costs more money um, and i wish that we as rescue organizations didn't have donkeys coming in with bad feet um, and my mission is to try and get everybody in the world working with their donkey's feet so that they don't have to relinquish animals with bad feet to donkey sanctuaries and charities around the world because that would just make such a math, massive difference to the welfare of the animals. It's not about force. It's about planning. It's about restraint and it's an environment. Set it up first. You know, what's the best way to do this? How do we do it? Have we got the right people here? You need to take, tackle it like a middle, military operation and make sure that it happens well. Um, and then when you've got all that done, then you start training. If it's in the middle and you can put a couple of weeks work on those feet and the donkey before you have to get the restraint done, I would advise that. Um, if there's not urgent pressure, but it needs to be done. And if you've got lots of time, then don't get it done. Start doing training, which is, is the next bit. But I wanted to just share with you that I often hear this. People use the excuse of getting it done or forced to say, yeah, but nothing bad happened. They tie the animal up short, they wrestle with him, the farrier holds on and they go, nothing bad happened. Why isn't he getting better? And the scenario that I kind of came up with talking to people was, let's imagine um, that you maybe have a fear of spiders or snakes or um, I don't know worms or small spaces or heights now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to help you a little bit with your your fear I've got to get something done maybe the spiders have magic healing properties I don't know but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get three or four strong people um, and we're going to hold you I'm going to put some tape over your mouth because I don't want to hear all that screaming and, and anything that might go on. And we wouldn't want a spider to go in your mouth. So just for safety, we put tape on your mouth. We're going to hold you and we're going to let a spider crawl over you or maybe two or three or a snake slither over you. Or we're going to just, you know, hold you in a, in a small space or hang you over a very uh, tall building. But just a, a few minutes. We're not talking about flooding. I'm not trying to fix you. I just need to ex expose you to this. It's in your own best interests. And then I'm going to take you back and, and we've removed the spiders, we've removed the snakes. Now I'd be interested to know in the chat box if that was the situation. Um, that was the t if that was the reason that um, you know, we held you down and we got that done, then I'd like to know if you had that fear and we'd done that to you and we'd held you down. Before we took the tape off, would you think nothing bad happened? Because it seems to me we so often with feet talk about nothing bad happening when actually emotionally, mentally, huge damage is done. Um, I've taken the slides off for a moment because I just wanted to see whether you thought that was... Um, difficult you know and yeah bad is subjective and and all those sorts of things but if you imagine if you had a bad fear if you had a, a phobia if you found that really uncomfortable would you get up and go yeah nothing bad happened because it seems to me with feet handling often people tell me nothing bad happened because he didn't kick anybody he didn't injure himself he didn't rear up he didn't get away and we got the feet trim so nothing bad happened why isn't he getting better because he's terrified because he's just had a terrible experience. Um, so I think it's really important to, to recognize just because something physically appears that um, we didn't have a problem, then um, doesn't mean to say that we don't have a problem. So 
you can probably just appreciate that. I think it's so easy for us to ignore the emotional side of stuff, especially with donkeys being so stoic and hiding their body language and hiding those emotions. So many people miss that element of working with their donkey, you know? Um, so it, it's not something I'm going to do to anybody. And I'm sorry if I've just made anybody feel really ugh, horrible. Um, but I just wanted to get across that because I hear it so often, you know, I'm, I've, I've, caught him, we hold him really tight, I pick up his feet, nothing bad happens, why isn't he getting better? And the same thing applies to the dentist, or the vet, and all that stuff. Nothing bad happened in our opinion, because we're talking physically, but emotionally. Um, probably something really bad happened. And um, that's really cool. So yeah, I can see you making some comments and you can see those things. That's brilliant. But I just wanted to share that getting it done um, bit with you. Let's see if we can go back here to the slides. Training. Now for me, what's important here is that you don't go to the problem to solve the problem. So common. People expect when they get in touch and they say, Ben, my donkey's not kicking. They want to know how they're going to pick up the feet but I'm not going to send you to the problem to fix the problem. Um, because I think that that causes more problems. And this is the same as if you're going for the trailer, you know, if you've got a, a donkey that doesn't load, don't go to the trailer to fix that. If it, if it's the vet, don't get the vet in to fix that. You know, if it's leading, don't go and try and go for a walk down the road. There's some stuff that we need to do that. And that's because we're talking about the science of behavior. We're working with behavior. We're not just using a method that says this is how you fix all the problems. We're gonna have 10 solutions to one problem. And in this case, kicking. Um, so don't go to the problem to fix the problem. And, and I'm gonna show you why. I wanna share with you a case study. Now, this actually came up this week, genuine email from a lady um, who had a problem with her donkeys. She sent me an email, uh, pretty standard. And I said, okay, this is great timing. Can I use this for this presentation and, and share some of it? Change the names and stuff. Uh, but just to go through it, because I think a lot of you will see some similarities maybe in your own situations. It, it gets a bit wordy for a couple of um, slides here. I'm really sorry, but just read through these if you, you will. She's got a couple of donkeys that she rehomed. Um, haven't been handled for a long time by the vet or barrier. You know, they'd been in a, a rescue center for a while before she took them on. One is Placid and, and Bonnie, the animal that we're concerned about, ha, is more strong-willed. Um, struggling to get Bonnie to lift her feet or even tolerating it. This is kind of interesting. The farrier has been trimmed the feet, but she was tied up very tight. She let me continue that once a week. Carrot incentives further four times on the fifth time she tried to squash my husband against the fence. And I'm wondering if that maybe is a little bit about uh, what I've just said about um, nothing bad happened, but actually for her, it was a bad thing. And it reached that point where she's like, I can't do this. And it, it also has probably paid into some other things. What I will say in this case study, I obviously sent out a detailed questionnaire, which gave me a lot of background. Um, we didn't just rely on the email. So when you guys email me in and say, Ben, what do I do about this? You generally get a, a big questionnaire you've got to fill out. Her general character would be described as headstrong, okay? Generally doesn't like being messed with unless it's on her terms. Um, she will let me groom her holding the lead rope, but if I tie her up um, she and groom, she displays tension. She's working on continuing to tie her up and groom her. No one ever hurt her while she was with me, but she has been tied up tight for the fire, which she disliked. Okay, so we can see where that's going. Uh, we did some, she did some target training. Now I'm not going to get into target training and clicker training and those sorts of things. That's a bigger subject. Uh, I think someone wrote a book on it. Maybe I did. Um, there's an online course, you know, but, but she's tried some positive reinforcement. I'm not going to get into whether the method that she was using, I, I wouldn't use a particular one reward, one uh, click method, because I think it can lead to these sorts of problems that are experienced here about duration and holding the foot up for longer and impatience and food problems. It doesn't have to, but that's for a different webinar, perhaps. 
These are my first donkeys, no experience with equine, so I admit I'm a bit scared. Uh, I'm guessing there's a lot of you out there who are a bit scared and lacking confidence, and I'm going to talk about confidence at the end because it's an important factor in, in what we're doing. Any advice you can give during the webinar? Well, you got really lucky because it's all about you from now on. Um, the questionnaire that I sent out, a few more questions just to give you an idea. I'd say she's dominant. I'm not going to go into the whole dominant question, um, uh, but she's scared of new things. So we've got an immediate contradiction. Uh, she treats uh, a lot of, of the interaction I have with her with suspicion on occasions, disdain on others. She tolerates grooming. She will let me touch her legs. Um, she has improved with the catching. Happy to come for me for a bottom scratch when she feels like it. Okay. They were both obese when they came to us. That's a tragedy of donkeys. Uh, they've um, still overweight at this time, I understand, but they're working on it. Uh, in the previous home for years, grew up with the kids, but they lost interest. And they kept a head collar and bonnie all the time as they couldn't catch her. Um, she will buck and run off, and that's probably her opinion of that bit of catching her and your husband um, in, imitating the farrier and doing those sorts of things, which was a good idea. It just hasn't been able to, to work out, and we can't apply fly repellent either. What's interesting, right at the end, she came up with, uh, she came to me very little handling, certainly over the last number of years, only caught for the farrier and the vet, and then with force. I suspect the farrier had not been patient with her. I'm guessing you're all forming your hypothesis about now as to why this donkey might be doing what she's doing. And that's absolutely fantastic. What I would always urge you to do is this. If you have a donkey with a foot handling problem, do the same thing. Write out the history, even if it's to yourself. Send it to a friend. You don't have to send it to me necessarily. Get it out on paper. Um, because what you often find after all the emotions come out, then some of the really important stuff starts to come on the paper as well. So sit down and actually write down the history. I see so many times when people email me a great history, which I want them to do, they actually have already identified the answer in there. They just um, haven't noticed it when they were writing it down. So that's my first tip. My first step, if you've got a behavioral issue, don't think of it just about, oh, she kicks. Get out the history, what she does, her character, everything like that. And that's a really good start in place. It's a really important thing to do. It's essential if you're, if you're working with other people's animals in any way. Because right at the end there, she came to me very little handling, certainly over a number of years. We're starting to see a pattern. There's a lot of contradictions for this animal. And, and there is. You know, a lot of you will probably tell me, my donkey will come up, I'll have a scratch, but if I try and pick up its feet, it's going to give me a problem. It's going to kick, it's going to become frightened. And that makes a lot of sense. The conflict between wanting to be with you, but worrying about what you're, you're going to do. Now, what we tend to do is work with the ABC of behavior. So. Um, We're going to work with looking at the antecedents. Um, the antecedents are what happens just before the behaviors occur. So what's occurring? What's going on? The behavior comes next. What actually does she do? Does she tuck a tail? Does she kick out? Does she move sideways? Does she try and run away? And the third thing is the consequences. What happens at this point? Does, does the farrier work stop? Does, do you move away? Do you persist? What, what actually goes on? And again, write these things out so that you begin to get a very clear picture of the behavior um, that's occurring and why it might be occurring. In um, Bonnie's situation, we're looking at the head collar. Clearly, there's some issues over what the head collar means some of which have been slightly overcome, but there's probably a link there to the head collar, meaning that physically uncomfortable things are likely to happen. Probably, you know, that she's only been caught for the vet and the farrier and the dentist, if she's been lucky enough to have those things on a regular basis. Clearly tying up is an issue. And 
body touching. So she's tolerating grooming. Now, this is where I'm talking about not going to the problem to solve the problem. If my donkey only tolerates grooming, then I'm probably thinking picking up the feet is a step too far. We need an animal that's comfortable having their body touched, that they're comfortable being groomed, that they're comfortable um, having their legs stroked before we ever think about picking up feet. The body language and confidence of the owner is probably giving off some signals which indicate what's about to happen and what's going, going on. And most commonly, if you can pick up your feet, but there's a problem with a farrier, it could be a two person thing. And there's a little bit of this one with Bonnie that there's two people possibly signaling that something uncomfortable is about to happen. So those are all the antecedents. The behavior is that um, she's going to squash somebody against the wall. If she's tied up, she's going to try and run away. She's going to stamp. She's going to kick. She's going to try and avoid picking up her feet. And the consequences are she doesn't pick up her feet and she doesn't have to stand there. So this behavior is clearly working for her, which is, which is really effective and, and most of you will be familiar with with all of that again this starts to tell us well what have we got to work with you now we haven't thought about picking up the feet because we've got all of these other problems first is that making sense with everybody just want to check that we're all still there and and these things are um what you need to do again write them out get a video of yourself video have your friend video you if necessary um yeah so that we get that someone's asked can i show you a questionnaire it's just like eight pages of questions why when how long history feed diet everything uh that goes on you'll see how this all ties together um as we get into it but again i would just encourage you to do the abc what's going on what happens because this will start to highlight for you what goes on next and how we work with those things um so yeah it is important that we break that down and these are all elephant um, elephants these are all elements of uh, bonnie's case uh, that we need to work on so these are four elements that are absolutely crucial. Now, the number one thing that you want to do is be able to teach your donkey. In fact, what would you say it would be if I hadn't, you know, put it up here? We think about going to the problem and picking up feet, but the key element is teaching your animal to offer standing still as a way of solving a problem. Okay, or oh, some of you are jumping in there with trust. That's the key element. And yeah, 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 yeah. I like trust and we'll get to trust. But uh, no, for me, the key thing here is standing still as a way of solving problems. Whether this is your veterinary interaction, whether this is picking up feet, it doesn't matter. This is the number one way a donkey can control its environment and control what happens to it. Learning to offer standing still. And that's the key behavior that we want to work for. We want to tell the animal, how do you solve the problem? Which is potentially me touching your body or touching your legs. We want you to enjoy that in time. And, and that's when we start to get into the other elements. But when we're thinking about what we teach, so often we're thinking about, I want my animal to pick up his feet. But what I really want him to do is to learn to offer standing still as a way of solving a problem. So initially when we start training, that's what we're marking continually standing still we'll talk about how we do that in a moment but um we've also got this comfort zones now the comfort zones are really important because what i see is that we massively overreach them because we're going to the problem to solve the problem we're reaching down the leg we're seeing how far we can um, go and, and it's what i call the creepy creepy thing where people sort of stroke the leg and they see how far they can get down the leg before he kicks and they push that comfort zone too far what we need to do is learn to recognize how small the comfort zones are and you see that moment where the donkey says oh i don't really like that just the tiniest movement of the head just a little shift of the body the little bit of tension in the muzzle that's a stretch of the comfort zone 
When we start paying attention to those, then we don't overreach our animal. Because the problem is when we overreach our animal, when we overstretch them, what we do is we become inconsistent. And if we become inconsistent, our animal can't trust us. Because trust is simply the ability to predict the behavior of another animal or person. If I can trust you, then it means I can predict your behavior and what you're going to do. So it's really crucial that if you start working on standing still, you become very predictable. You're not moving around all the different things you're rewarding and what you're trying to do. You stretch the comfort zones in a really gradual, small, tiny, tiny way. And then that will begin to make you predictable and consistent, which will lead to trust. Which is why I say standing still comes before trust. Trust comes out of learning to stand still. It comes out of stretching the comfort zones correctly. And it comes out of shaping behavior. Now, there's a nice picture here of a donkey that had a behavioral issue in one of our homes. Um, some consultation work, some great work with the owners. And here you um, can see that not many of us pick up the feet like this. Um, there's tied up there's the farrier squatting down like that there's a stand there's all of those sorts of things this came out this success came out of working on these areas and it came through uh shaping which is really important and the next step that we want to look at so when you're thinking about where do i go and for bonnie it's thinking about how do i get a standing still just for being groomed how do I get a standing still and being comfortable with being tied up or being held? How do I work in a way that stretches her comfort zones a little bit? That way we start to get trust because what I think is the problem with um, Bonnie is that um, she's not who she's being labeled. I think she's quite a nervous donkey. I think that she probably... Um, is worried about what's going to happen to her. She has a lot of conflict. She's got a huge amount of history of bad handling and she's only been in the home six or seven months. And so what we're seeing is moments of her capacity to be able to do things that she wants to reach across that bridge as donkeys so often do, but she's worried about what's going to happen to her. She's worried about what the head collar means she were worried about what two people mean she worries about what something's going to happen when you when you touch my leg or her leg even and and that's really crucial now how do we begin to communicate with our donkey well it's about shaping behavior we're all familiar with shaping i just use this little stare analogy um start at the bottom where you are now it doesn't matter i can't even catch my donkey okay well then let's have a catching shaping plan before we get to the picking up the feet shaping plan and the goal where we're going to um this is written down and i'll show you what that looks like in a moment but it should be written down i'd love to know how many of you are actually using a written shaping plan in any of your training because i would say it's a massively important thing to do it gives you a lot of clarity a lot of consistency and, and builds a lot of trust Yay, you're going to get to the goal. That's going to be really great. It's just the process of breaking down the required behavior into small manageable steps or learning blocks. And you're probably thinking, yeah, Ben, got it. Know that. Got to break it down. But what I see consistently around the world is something that looks like this. These massive steps that overreach the animal, that stretch the animal's comfort zone far too far and cause all sorts of problems. And it, it really, this is the problem with picking up feet is that we so often are trying to end goal we're trying to we're worried about the pressure you know the feet thing has that pressure every six to ten weeks got to get the farrier got to get the farrier got to get it done and so we're trying to end goal we're trying to push against the water and, and and get there faster than we perhaps should and we end up taking big steps and that has a, a real detrimental effect because not only have we got a written plan but you can see in the middle here um I'm just going to draw a little line here around this bit if I can um, do that for you. Let's find a nice uh, color here to um, draw around. This little bit in the middle is very much about these small steps that 
go into the written plan. People always say, oh, but Ben, I, I need to be flexible. I, I need to be, I can't write all those steps down. The flexibility comes from in between. So this step might be picking up the foot for five seconds. This step may be picking it up for 10 seconds. To get from five to 10, you might have three or four or five other smaller steps within your training session. This is where we go wrong with shaping, is we make our steps too big and we don't make our steps small enough to be safe and successful. What does it look like? Um, for us well here we go oh i need to get rid of that nice line for you um that this is just a tiny part of a shaping plan and i've actually written this out and people are like then do i have to really write that out it's in my head you know i know where i'm going it's 115 steps in the shaping plan if you can keep them in order in your brain and know which ones you've done and where you are exactly you're a better man than I. It's easier to get them out of your head so that you can focus on where you are with that animal. And they're tiny, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. You know, hand pause, hand resting, um, hand resting for five seconds, 10 seconds. These are really tiny steps. And it's important also that you'll notice in here that I've put the donkey remains calm. We've put an emotional state on these steps so that people can really think about what the animal is doing what does it look like not that i can just touch it as he whizzes past i can hold it there but he's trembling about actually the donkey is calm and relaxed and i don't go to the next step until my donkey is calm and relaxed with that um the next one is a really crucial one to me people start touching their leg they're touching the hoof and then they want to pick it up for me i want to break that one step down into these six different steps here seven steps so touching the feet and, and stroking the leg is one thing but getting them to shift and balance on three legs, you know, being able to tip the hoof onto the point, being able to move it around on the floor, being able to pick it up and just move it a few centimeters left, right, back and forward, sliding it around, picking it up, putting it down. These are tiny, tiny steps. Most people make the mistake of, I can touch his foot, now I'm going to try and pick it up. It's too big. You haven't prepared the animal. We need to break it down much, much smaller if we're going to be able to shape behavior successfully. It's so crucial um, to being able to do that. Yeah, of course, we're rewarding the donkey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get um, into that a little bit uh, in a moment as how we do this. Um, and again, these things are down to your choice. But yeah, we are going to be doing that. Now, it might take a week to do one step. It might take one session to do 10 steps. It, it, there's no sort of time scale on this. This is very much about feel where you are, what the animal's doing and how it's working. Funny enough, a little bit of talk about positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. Um, again, this is a whole topic uh, on its um, own. And when we launch the Donkey Sanctuaries um, online university in the summer, there's going to be some sections on the behavior courses about this for you all. I'm not suggesting that we use punishment in any form or format really here for you, um, but it's in the quadrant. What I wanted to draw your attention to was positive reinforcement or anything that increases the likelihood of the behavior happening uh, again or being repeated. Notice likelihood. Now, I think this is part of Bonnie's problem. The inconsistent behavior, the bottom scratches she likes, but then she doesn't. The, I'll come up and sort of tolerate grooming. I'll do some work for, for some food rewards, but not if you don't. It has been misread as being um, headstrong, difficult behavior. I actually think that what's happening is that we are seeing um, the fact that she can't cope with the bigger behaviors. Whatever you offer in terms of reinforcement has to match the size of the step that you're asking for. And this is where your positive reinforcement ties into your shaping. If you're asking big steps, overreaching the animal, giving them a piece of carrot or giving them a scratch isn't going to do that. No more than anybody I've ever asked who is terrified of spiders. And I say to them, if I give you a dollar, if I give you a pound, if I give you a euro, will you hold that spider? I've never had a taker at one dollar for holding a spider if somebody's truly terrified of them. And it's the same for picking up feet. 
if the step's too big, the reinforcement I can offer isn't going to be able to do that deal. So the positive reinforcement could come from food. Totally happy with that. Get the timing right. Use a bum bag. If you want to use clicker training in the right way, fantastic. Um, or with the scratches. The one thing with food is I always find it heats behavior up a little bit or can do unless you're doing it um, slightly differently. Scratches tend to calm a behavior down. So if you can get your donkey enjoying scratches, then that lowers the heart rate, builds a bond, gets them calmer, which is really what you want with a donkey that's a bit nervous about picking up their feet. With the scratches, really hard. Wear a pair of gloves so you're scratching hard enough that your fingers are on fire. Um, four to six seconds sort of per scratch as a reward. Really important for the tiny steps. Now, some people are going to say they don't want to use negative reinforcement. That's absolutely fine. That's entirely your choice. My personal belief is just us being there is a negative reinforcer in some cases. And this is negative reinforcement. It just don't think of this as bad. This is about taking away. It's a minus. We remove something the donkey doesn't like. So in this case, it might be my hand resting at the edge of the comfort zone on the donkey's hip. The donkey feels that's mildly uncomfortable. It doesn't like it. When it stands still, I release my hand. That tells the donkey that standing still gets rid of my hand. And we gradually build up that process. I personally um, find the combination of the two, um, working with the animal is probably most successful but individual animals differ and circumstances we need to work out which one we're going to use people often want to get into the punishment segment your donkey's kicking i want to punish it um how do i stop my donkey from kicking using positive reinforcement well you reward something else you reward standing still you teach it that standing still is more effective uh, at getting what it wants than kicking not by punishing the kicking but by rewarding other things so the donkey has a choice to make so really powerful it takes more thought on our part it gives more direction for us to think about because it's not as easy as just applying something bad i wouldn't go there it's not something i recommend um, it's not something i do um, we try and stick with a positive reinforcement and minimal non-escalating. Non Don't escalate the negative reinforcement so you're holding on for dear life. That's a way to get injured or to terrify the animal. So what about Bonnie? Well, like I say, I think there's a couple of issues here. I think some of the behavior she's displaying, she's been labeled as this particular character. And that's causing a problem for us, the owner, to get over. What we need to see is her behavior is probably built from conflict. She's not a naturally confident donkey, I wouldn't say. She's, when she comes up for the bottom scratches, that's great. But then if you want to do more to her, to get the bottom, to do for the bottom scratches, she's probably thinking, I can't do that. When we're using positive reinforcement, if the steps are small enough and something she can do, she'll offer the behavior. If you go past that, she's probably going to react by moving away and trying to kick. So there's this misunderstanding of, in her body language and her behavior and her character and her um, personality, which is leading us down the wrong path or the owner down the wrong path. And it's really important we go all the way back to what's normal behavior for a donkey? Why do they kick? Is it possible that she's in pain because she's overweight? Has she previously had laminitis? Does she have low, low grade laminitis right now? Um, has that been a factor? So we might just test that out. We might just make sure we always stand on a soft mat to give her some comfort rather than on a concrete yard and those sorts of things we could ask and talk to our vet about giving a course of uh, painkillers and see if there's any improvement in uh, her picking up her feet or doing those sorts of things i think the problem is that we've very much gone to the problem to solve the problem and what we really should be doing with this donkey is building a lot more of that standing still catching grooming tying up if we want to the head collar all of those things are already putting bonnie into a heightened sense of fear before we go to reach down the leg and then it's about learnt behavior i've been here before i know what happens i'm going to kick i'm going to defend myself and in the majority of cases are perhaps not with a big strong farrier that wants to hold on but in the majority of cases kicking has been very successful and it's become a learnt behavior to defend herself and 
I just wanted to add in a little bit of a counter because what we're talking about here is counter conditioning. Now, counter conditioning is where we offer good things to make the experience more positive. It's not strictly about positive reinforcement of timing. It's how do we make this all more positive? So if our interaction with Bonnie could be improved through improving her catching, improving her grooming, improving all the things we want to do with her before we even think about feet, actually the interaction is better and calmer and in a better place to allow us to then work with the feet. So often people tell me they've got a foot problem, but they've actually got a catching problem. The donkey's so wound up by being caught, although we can catch it, that it's terrified by the time we actually go to pick up its feet. The other aspect of this is generalization. Now, this is the one thing I would almost guarantee people don't do and you can't do enough of. This didn't start out looking like this, this nice barrier crouched down, and it doesn't look like that for most people who are picking out their donkey's feet. What we need to do is the first part of your plan is about teaching your donkey to pick up his feet in one place with one person at one time of the day. And that's what most people do. They train their donkey when it's convenient to them. And if it's rainy and windy, we don't want, want to do it. But then we need to be able to give the donkey the tools to say, the resilience to say, whatever the combination of circumstances, it's okay, you still have to just stand still and pick up your foot and everything will be fine. So we start to go, can we pick them up in a different order? Can we do it in different places? You know, we always do it in one place, but then the trimmer wants to do it in somewhere completely different. And for an animal, that's really hard to do. For us as humans, as adult humans, we go, well, it's the same thing, but a donkey doesn't. So it needs to experience in those different areas until it goes wherever I go, picking up my feet looks like that. Different people, two people being tied up against just being held. You know, you need to put these into your shaping plans. This is the second half of your shaping plan, which is why there are 115 steps in there. The stand, you know, if you've got a, I think we need smaller stands for donkeys for a start. I don't think the donkey sanctuary um, farriers use stands. Um, we, if we could get smaller stands, maybe. Um, but if you're going to use a stand, add in the shaping plan for it. Have them get used to stood on a, a, um, a flannel and, and then maybe a very thin piece of wood and then a thicker and two centimeters, five centimeters, 10 centimeters, move it forward a little bit, repeat the process, get them used to being able to pick up their feet and put it on a stand. Uh, different times of the day. And you know, if you're always practicing at a time convenient to you, does, is that the time of the day that the farrier comes? It comes just as you're about to feed. You know, can your donkey deal with that? Different weather conditions. It's raining. Well, we don't, we don't do training when it's raining and windy. Yeah, but what if your farrier turns up when it's windy and raining? Um, and then we, do we do it wrong? You know, do you drop the brush? Do you, do you drop the, the metal thing so it's like the farrier's rasp being dropped on the floor? These are all part of building your donkey's um, resilience and generalization so that whatever the situation, they can um, cope with those things. It's common sense but I really don't see people doing it. Now, again, because we, if you get your donkey through that first trim and you've done the training and you've shaped the behavior and you've gone down the leg slowly and you've rewarded the good stuff, you've counter conditioned and we step back and we go, oh yes, it's, well, that wasn't too bad. That was, that was okay. Then you carry on training. That's not where you stop. For the next three trims, you are going to keep training in between trims. It's not your farrier's job to train your donkey. It's our job. And what we do is we step back and we go, oh, we got it done. And, and then the comfort zone shrink and the, the farrier comes back eight weeks later and there's a problem again. So we have to keep training and we do this generalization and we keep stretching it for the next um, three trims at least. And then just a week before the fourth trim, make sure you do the training again and the fifth trim, and then you'll get to a point where your donkey will be able just to do it all the time. No, it is important. If you want that trust, you don't want to put your donkey in a position where the farrier has to hold on. Uh, it's not their job to do that, no more than it's the vet or the dentist's job to, to train your donkey. And this process would, would work for the dentist. It'll work for the vet. It's exactly the same thing. Finally, there's the human element, which is massive. Um, and just a few pointers here um, for you. A lack of confidence is your friend. Why is it your friend? Because it keeps you safe. That's ultimately 
when you think you're lacking confidence and, and confidence is about the ability to cope and you are actually probably already coping so cut yourself some slack but what it's telling you is there's something that is a danger to you there's a risk you could get kicked here and if you're feeling that that's telling you you haven't done enough training it's telling you that you haven't done enough shaping or enough generalization you're actually correct you are lacking confidence because you're thinking what happens if now that is something that's important to recognize you know more classically we see it on people who get on horses and go for a ride and they don't listen to that little voice and then they end up having a serious accident that lack of confidence is there because there's a genuine reason you should be aware of so i think that it's actually fear is the problem fear of being kicked or hurting the animal and that comes from lacking a clear plan of action you can see where i'm going with this you know if we're going to overreach and put pressure on ourselves or the donkey we're going to have a problem so what tends to happen is we start this cycle of i don't want to get kicked but i, ha I need to get it done because the farrier's coming and and i've got to pick their feet up you know i've had um, animals that have you know been sedated had their feet and they've had much longer than the standard six to ten weeks you know they can go longer than that if you need them to or if you need to get the, the vet back to have a, another sedation before you can complete the training do that buy yourself some time stop putting the pressure on you know a shaping plan also builds confidence in you and this is why because if you are shaping your donkey's behavior through those tiny steps you're getting feedback you're learning to predict their behavior instead of doing the creepy creepy thing where you're reaching down the leg and waiting to see whether you get kicked you're knowing that if i put my hand on his hip and he stands there that's fine and if i do it for two seconds that's fine if i do it for five seconds that's fine if at any point you overreach that a little bit all you do is you come back down the shaping plan do an easier step and build back up again really simple process but in doing that you learn to trust the animal and that starts to give you the confidence to be able to keep going rather than just doing that i've got to be able to pick up his feet i've got to be able to pick up his feet that's really dangerous and and is going to damage the relationship so accept that that lack of confidence is your friend and i know quite a few of you and, and tell me about it if, you, if if confidence is an issue for you it makes sense you know who wants to get kicked but getting over that and becoming more relaxed comes from not feeling you've got to get the feet picked up today and if you have to get it done tomorrow because there's a problem then we'll go all the way back to that bit that i said about getting it done buy ourselves some time do the training we're supposed to enjoy the journey we're supposed to have donkeys so we can enjoy them and then we get all knotted up about things so it's about relaxing and following this um, process so you know in summary issues with handling feet you know kicks out when handled all that sort of thing we can see the tense body the movement of the rear end when approached the tail swishing you know if you're getting any of these things then the problem's not with picking up the feet it's with you being in close proximity to the animal so we need to start further back always start further back people just go to the problem to fix the problem you know if he's tucking his tail and if he's trying to escape we know that it's not about kicking if he's getting to kicking we've already missed all those signals cause could be pain you know lack of experience fear you know perhaps we're just lifting the feet too high call the vet if we can to ensure pain's not the case cause of, of the behavior it's important to to try and get that out of the equation whenever you can really go to it as the first possibility detailed investigation we've talked about you writing out your notes do the abc yeah it may be get uh, a behavior um experience qualified behaviorist to, to do your behavior modification plan if you don't have one in your area you know get in touch with the donkey sanctuary get online do, do various things that you actually know what you're working with get your shaping plans or write your shaping plans um, in detail have them there work with them use your positive reinforcement counter conditioning to shape behavior really small steps and, and make sure we expand those comfort zones in a very small way in line with our shaping of behavior the only fact here is people go ben how long will this take um and the truth is that really depends on how long the problem has been ingrained in the animal the reasons for the problem how good your handling is how good your timing is 
um, how often you can do the training, how much pressure you put on yourselves, all sorts of stuff. It shouldn't be about time. It should be about the experience. You know, you want to build a relationship. This is where you build a relationship. This is the journey. So if you've got a donkey with foot problems, instead of saying, oh, this is terrible, you know, oh, it's really, really weighing on you. This is about, wow, wow, what an opportunity. Because when I get through this, we're going to have a much better relationship. You know? So really just start to enjoy that journey. Come off it. And you will find it happens much quicker. Um, Okay, I'm kind of there. You know, Bonnie, I think we need to have some different shaping plans in place. I think we need to step back, re-adjust um, how we think about her and understand her behavior and view her in a different light. That's really important. And let's have a look if we've had any questions, any thoughts or anything like that. Um, any specific recommendations for those of us who work with BLM boroughs? Uh, that may be unique uh, to that population. Nope, no special recommendations at all. A wild borough is actually easier to work with in my experience because, uh, and I've been lucky enough at the Donkey Welfare Symposium to work with quite a lot, that um, it's easier because they don't have lots of negative conditioning from human experiences or people trying to do stuff when they shouldn't know if that's if you've got a blm borough that's been through a couple of hands and people try to fix stuff and made it worse then that's a, a different issue if you're just talking about a plain wild animal coming off the ranges being how, handled through the blm system um they are pretty straightforward to to work with given a bit of time and a bit of um teaching to stand still and doing those sorts of things uh, yeah, you want to know about working with that liberty or halted or holding the rope and standing tied and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you know, this is entirely down to you. I'm always going to recommend for safety that you probably have a head collar on. Now, if you're a really experienced donkey burrow trainer and you didn't want to do it without, that's absolutely fine. But I, as a behaviorist, can't recommend that because it, it what happens when it goes a little bit wrong? People miss, novices miss, and they reach a bit too far down that leg and the donkey turns towards and the head collar just allows you to bring that head back to you and avoid getting it kicked. If we were all really good at our timing, you had lots and lots of practice, um, great. Then you can um, do it without the head collar on. But what you do need to know is that your uh, head collar is not suppressing behavior that they're comfortable with being caught that they want to be with you before you use it doing that if you want to do it without great you know go for it um what are the behavior cues uh, to look for to know whether the donkey's calm and relaxed okay you have to you have to feel it you know it's it's everything from nose to tail you know it's the tail clamp muscle tension how clamped the mouth is, how tight the nose is, nostrils, those sorts of things. Um, get a video. And when you're close to it, it's sometimes difficult to see. Get a video, step back. Get a video of your donkey in the field when you know he's calm and relaxed. Get a, a video of your donkey eating and doing stuff. Then compare him to what he does when, when you've got him on a head collar or when you're trying to pick up his feet. And you'll soon pick up those uh, little clues that the animal has uh, given you. Um, there was one here about, I wanted to just touch on if I can find it about how do you get your farrier? Um, yeah. Uh, how do you convince your farrier that it's not true that he needs to know I'm the boss, but rather the donkey is scared of him? Wow. Get a different farrier. I don't know. Um, what I would say about farriers is, is they get a rough deal. You know, they're, they're expected to handle all sorts of donkey's feet. They haven't been prepared for them and it's not their job. I would definitely say to your farrier, you know, you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket and you're going to have to pay him double. You're going to say to him, I want you to come, but I want you to take twice as long. And um, this is the work I've been doing. Uh, show the farrier that you've been attempting to change things, that you've been working with him and doing that sort of stuff. Um, the Donkey Sanctuary does have um, videos and, and things on donkey trimming and feet and, and can support that. But, you know, buy yourself some time by showing the farrier that you're trying to make a difference and how you'd like him to work or her to work. And um, be prepared to pay extra to get that service. 
um, I'm afraid, until you do the training. I, I'm a great believer that if all farriers came and they went to pick up your donkey's foot and he started kicking and the farrier went, no, nope, not doing it, but you still need to pay me, people would work much quicker with getting their feet sorted out. Or maybe they just wouldn't do feet, which would be terrible. But um, I think we need to encourage people to be prepared to go, okay, if I, my farrier is doing a job and he wants to get it done, um, tell your farrier what sort of job you want and, and that it's about experience rather than just uh, getting it done. Um, but do the work, do the training, and then you'll show the farrier. Uh, what about biting? My little one doesn't kick, he tries to nip. Okay, some donkeys are biters, some donkeys are kickers. Um, just, it's the same experience. He's communicating with you or she's communicating with you as to why that donkey doesn't like um, what they're doing. And it's important that you view it in that way. And go back, do your ABCs, do your history, have a look at what they are trying to tell you. Break it down so he doesn't feel he's got to bite you. Maybe you're putting your hand on him and comforting him, comforting him when, you, when he bites and you're saying, good boy, it's okay. And, and he's actually seeing it as a reward. I don't know. Without seeing the case, difficult to know. But do the situation. Yeah, great reminder to be patient. Yeah, I like patience, but I also like... If, efficiency we want to get our donkey to a point where he doesn't have to worry about having his feet done so doing the right things it's not just about taking endless time it's about being very efficient in the way that we work so that the animal can um uh succeed uh, mark one of our dwas at the donkey sanctuary great i recommend all no new homes book a double appointment with their farrier you know brilliant yeah yeah great do it pay for quality um Farrier tends to be too tall. Uh, what's a good height for a standard sized donkey? You know, it's not about height, it's about attitude. You know, we've got a farrier who's quite tall, but you know, he'll get down on his hands and knees if he has to. Um, make, you want a farrier whose attitude isn't going to make the donkey comfortable. Um, if he makes the donkey comfortable, then he's probably not going to have a problem with them. So it's not about size. Um, you know, I'm six foot three and I can pick up donkey's feet and, and do all that. And I pretend to be a farrier and do all that work, but I just have to work harder at bending my knees and keeping them low to the ground. Really important. Okay, Carol, I didn't mention that I'm not too clean on clicker training. Um, I'm very keen on clicker training, but I'm keen on it being done well. I've written a book about it. I've got an online course about it. I don't necessarily agree that sometimes it's done well. It can be done badly, like all training. Just because it's positive reinforcement doesn't mean to say it's positive for the animal. I think also that um, what we can see is that we can cause a lot of aggression or anxiety with the animal when they're constantly um, wanting food. Now, all of these can be overcome, and that's why I wrote a book about it. That's why I've got the online course about it, because I think it has to be done differently for equines than for dogs, because they behave in different ways. Um, which is uh, something to look at. So clicker training, absolutely done well done the right way but don't just go to the clicker I, my golden rule for clicker training carol is don't go to the clicker and use clicker training if you can't fix it without clicker training that means you've still got to have those shaping skills you've still got to have the stretch in the comfort zone skills you've got to be able to do all those things before you go to clicker training in my opinion and that's what i always recommend if you can fix it without then add clicker training to your menu but probably it's something for a lot of people they've got to work on first and don't use it with a problem behavior to start with this is too complicated you have to learn how it is the animal has to learn how it is starting something easy um christine saying i feel that like i'm breaking the trust when we have to sedate not if you give the animal the best experience possibly you know if, if you're buying time and this is long term not short term you're breaking the trust if he has a terrible experience every time because we didn't just sedate him once and then buy ourselves three months to do the work um so i but if you can do it well, if you can create the environment, if you can get the vet inside, do the oral sedation maybe before the intravenous or whatever you need to do, I think it can be done really well. And I've, I personally, when we do it well at the donkey sanctuary, I don't see those animals go back. In fact, they come forward. I, I don't see any break of trust in what we have to do. If you need to get you know the right people involved, cool. Um, but I, I wouldn't, if sedation is something that will make it easier for the animal and buy more time, um cool i've successfully trained my donkeys to let me handle their feet how do i transfer the trust to my farrier that's the generalization bit that's about 
build in other people, two people, different people, all that sort of thing. It's about when your farrier comes, showing your farrier what you've done, how you've done it. It's mimicking your farrier. How does he, he or she hold the leg? How do they pick up? What do they do? Copy them exactly so everything you possibly can do. And failing that, when your farrier comes, pick up your donkey's foot, have your farrier come in and just pass the foot to them so that they can then start work if necessary the first time. Pay double so the farrier can come in, spend a bit of time getting to know your donkey, you can show them what you've done before he does the work. 